Good day, this is Stefan from Animated Space where we create stylized art and today I'll be showing you how I sculpted the head for my Leo Cole project. Please make sure to like, share and subscribe to the channel and if you'd like more information from me, you can check out my Patreon at Animated Space. Now I shall get into the video. The first step for me whenever I start sculpting is to gather references. This helps to give me an actual visualization of how something looks from 2D to 3D. Now that that has been explained, we'll go to the tools panel, select a sphere. Once the sphere is selected, we'll make it editable. Then we'll go to move and turn on the transpose tool. To do this, make sure to turn off the gizmo 3D. Once that's done, pull out the transpose tool. Then we'll use the first button to flatten the edges and give us the accurate shape that we need for the sides. Okay, now that that's done, let's rotate it to a 90 degree angle and then let's duplicate it. Don't forget to turn back on the Gizmo 3D button and now we'll move the duplicate where we need it to be. Once we finish using the move button, we're gonna switch back to edit mode and now we'll use the move brush to move the sphere downwards. Then we'll bring the top down a bit so as to start creating the base of the lion head or where the eyes will be. Uh, let's pull the back out a bit and the top out a bit so as to get the forehead of the stylized lions. In these early stages, the model is going to look very, very weird. It might look a bit alienish, you know, because you're just pulling and pulling to get things how you need it to be. You're going to be playing around a lot to get the right shapes needed. So just stick with it for now. And I guarantee you, if you continue, then it'll look like what you want it to be. Another piece of advice I shall share is that in the early stages of sculpting, it's best to focus on the major shapes, getting the correct form and keeping the poly count as low as possible. This will save you a lot of headaches when you raise the poly count or subdivisions to add details in the future. Hopefully, those were some helpful tips. Now let's get back to the model. From here on, we shall create the mouth cavity. To do this, we'll mask off the particular area where the mouth will be. Then we'll pull it with the move tool. The reason for doing a mask is that areas not selected in the mask will remain unhinged. We shall continue to work on the mouth cavity by pulling it with the move brush a bit, and then we'll create another mask where the hole will be for the mouth. After doing that, we'll use the in-flat brush to push it in. When I'm done with the in-flat brush, I am going to smooth it out a bit because some areas you can see are very rough. Then I'm going to use the move brush again to move it into the right areas that I need it to be until it's built up to look like it looks right now. To build the ears, what I did was I appended a sphere into ZBrush and then I moved it into the shape you see right now. Next we'll use a trim curve brush to cut off the excess areas. Once that's done we'll start working on the inner cavity for the ear. To do this we'll create a mast and then we'll use the in-flight brush again and push it in. Now that it's carved, let's use the move tool to push it in a bit. And once that's ideal, we'll duplicate it. With the duplicate added, now we can start working on the eye cavity. To do this, we'll use the clay buildup brush. Hmm, let me move the ears a bit as they look a bit out of place. Okay, now that we've fixed the ears and used the clay buildup, to outline the nose structure as well as where the eyes will be, the next step will be to mask out the eye area and use the transpose technique we use to create the sides. Let's smooth the areas we just transposed and afterwards we'll start adding the nostrils, starting with the lower part of the nose. The nose will be built up using the clay built up brush. In fact, all built ups in this project will be done using the clay build up brush. 
Then we'll move and build up the sides until it looks like this. After that's done, we'll create a new sphere and that will be used to create the nose. I know I started off clay building the nose, but I decided to add a sphere and build it up because I find when I add shapes, it becomes easier for me to get the desired results. The next step we'll do is we're going to create the nostrils of the nose. This will be done using the masking and transpose technique we used in the past. Then we'll smooth it out. Hmm. Looking at it now from another perspective, the mouth area is too small. So let's mask that area and extend it a bit. Now let's use a smooth brush to get rid of the roughness. With that completed, let's develop the lips. First, we'll mask the area for the lips and then invert it so there's no other area is harmed. Then we'll use the move brush as well as the in-flat brush to build it up. That worked. Let's build up the eye sockets a bit as well as the space where the back of the head will be using the clay build up brush. We'll then offend the sphere and place it where the eye is gonna be as this will be the eye. Make sure to position it right because you want the iris to point outwards. Now that the eye is lined up right, duplicate it and then we'll use the move brush to build the socket around it to get it right. Okay, now that I have the perspective of the eyes being where they need to be, I need to build up the back a bit more. Hmm, we need to move the eyes a bit. Where they currently are, they look way too small and pinched up. Let's turn back on the ears and see how everything looks. Okay, now it looks good to me. The eyelids will be the next thing we work on. And to do this, I will duplicate the eye and then we're going to use select rectangle to select the areas we want to trim and then use the curved trim brush to trim those areas. Let's mask out where the eyebrows are going to be and then extract it as a different mesh. Make sure to turn on the mirror tool so as to simplify the process. Afterwards, go to the deformation tool in the tool panel to inflate them. The final step for the eyebrows will be to use the move brush plus smoothing to create the right shape. As the eyebrows are done, we can turn them off and turn on the ears. We can now do the whiskers. To do this, we'll be using the clay buildup as well as the damp standard brush to create them. With that done, we can now work on the teeth. To do that, a square will be appended into the project and then we should shrink it. Next, we'll increase the poly count because you'll need a high density to be able to create the shape. Once that's completed, you can start working on the shape. To create the rest of the teeth, we'll duplicate the one that was made and then modify them using the move brush. This will take a while, so I'll do a time lapse for this part. <laughs>
The time lapse is now over, given we've now created the top set. The next steps will be to duplicate the top set and recreate the bottom set of teeth. Ah, yes, they're good, but they need to be bended in. To do this, we'll use the bend curve modifier in ZBrush. And this is the first time I'm doing this. I did not realize you could do this in ZBrush until now. This is pretty dope if you ask me. We've finally reached the last steps of the head sculpt. What we're going to do now is we're going to use the trim dynamic brush, the clay builder brush and the pinch brush as well as the damp standard brush so as to make the edges not look as hard as they are right now and to make the head look more rocky. Right now it's too plain for me and it doesn't look like the reference. So we'll continue working on this for a little bit until we get it right. A few more strokes of the trim dynamic brush and it's now starting to look complete. I think I'm going to change the basic material to something more rocky just for testing purposes. Yes, now it's done and the next step will be to create the base rocks. That however will be done in a separate video. Thank you for watching and please like, share and subscribe or check out my Patreon link in the description to support the channel.